Hello and welcome to this Ableton Push 2 in Bitwig with uh, the Driven by Moss script video. In this episode I'm going to talk about the touch strip and how you can configure it or how you can use it. But let's get started. So I loaded up a um, 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 Polymer device. Um, standard with a little bit delay 2 and reverb because everything sounds better with delay and reverb. Magical. Okay, so um, let's switch to the push 2. Okay, on the push 2 you have on the left side this touch strip and with this touch strip you normally can um, play the pitch bend. So change the note um, up and down. So this configuration is done when you click on the track itself. And in the inspector on the left side, you have this pitch bend, pitch bend two expressions. And on this, with this numbers, you define how many half steps the you are able to transpose the sound up or down. So at the moment, there are two half steps. And if I change this to tw minus 24 and plus 24, uh, 24 half steps, um, aka two octaves. Or you can play the dying swan or something like that. Okay, so let's change it back to the normal thingy. Okay, this was not loud enough. Now it's loud enough. Okay, but there's a nice function with the driven by Moss script. If you press on the right side, on the bottom of the right side, the shift button, and keep it and keep it pressed and um, touch the touch strip, the display changes. And now you have a configuration here. And um, let's start with a function. The function is pitch bend, and this is what we get when we use the touch strip. So, and the next function is CC. And with CC, you are able to use um, the touch strip as a modulation wheel. I close the inspector here. And with every standard synthesizer device from Bitwig, there is this um, vibrato modulator, and this vibrato modulator is um, automatically connected to the mod wheel here. So what you see on the modulator is when I change the, or when I touch the touch strip here and move it up or down, the modulator reacts on that. So this is an automatic um, connection that is made with this modulator. Okay, so here we have now a way to manipulate our sound while playing. Okay, but this CC is not alone for the mod wheel because you see here CC and um, in the upper left corner as well CC and over the CC there is a number and this number you can change with this wheel above it. And normally on the standard, the default value is one. Because CC1 is the media standard for modulation wheel. And um, here you have, um, let's say, um, four standard pre-definitions for modulation. If I press here, nothing changes at the moment. Then here I have the expressions. If I press here this button, the CC changes to 11. The volume changes to 7 and the sustain is changing to 64. So these are standard MIDI um, values for MIDI CC. So your controller starts sending these MIDI CCs to your door. And um, the default value or the default uh, configuration is it's set on modulation. If you configure 
um, this CC here. But if I change it to expression and play, the controller sends MIDI CC11. So at the moment, there's nothing connected to um, CC11 here. So let me change that. For that, I load another modulator, the MIDI modulator. I call it the MIDI CC modulator. And there you see um, the messages it can, it can interpret, like CC, pressure, or pitch bend. So for CC, um, the expression had the CC value of 11. I can now scroll to 11 here. And if I um, touch the touch script st uh, strip, <laughs> you see there's changing something. But I can as well um, undo that, maybe like this. I can as well click on the learn CC and touch the touch strip, and you see it's on CC11. So with this, I can, for example, um, can, for example, modulate something like the pulse width, the sync, and maybe a little bit the filter, for example. Okay, so if I now press something and use it, I can ch change with the expression value um, all these knobs, for example. If I press back to modulation, I only have the vibrato. For example. And as well, the volume. And the volume is 7, but the volume doesn't change anything right now because um, there's nothing connected to the volume message. So let's uh, take in a MIDI CC. Okay. And for this MIDI CC, the volume volume if we look at the display the volume has the seven I think yes the seven and with the seven learn CC clicking on it CC7 and with the seven maybe I increase the volume a little bit but do the and a little bit down um, something else Maybe, maybe some more noise to it and less sub, for example. So if I press now and select the volume, oh, that's a subtle more noise, less sub. Expression. Maybe I show that with an activated push. Now um, volume. Expression. Modulation. Expression. Volume. And the last um, parameter is sustain. Sustain has the CC message um, CC64. And um, this is for the fader. Um, if you are below 50%, nothing changes. If you are above 50%, it holds like a pedal is doing. And now you can, using the pitch bend without actually pressing a key, because it holds the last pressed keys.
for example, if we go back to sustain and put it under 50%, the node disappears. So, and um, these are the CCs. So there are, there are other, let's just put everything back here. So we have, <laughs> Nice, okay. So there are uh, some other buttons on here, CC slash pitch, and this is like um, dividing the touch strip into parts. CC is the lower part, and pitch is the upper part. So everything, uh, let's say, um, that that I configured here above, like for example, expression is the CC or modulation or volume or not sustain but maybe sustain as well, could be. I don't know, didn't try that. It is, but like sustain is over 50, it goes back. So let's take the expression. The CC is on the lower part and the pitch is on the upper part. And the other button, the right button, is pitch on the lower part, so it pitches down, and the CC on the upper part. The next button is fader, and fader is directly connected to the track volume here. So if I change that, you see it changes here as well. So you could, you could um, like fade your your drag while it's playing, doing an automation, for example. If you do that on that volume uh, knob or volume uh, strip, normally I use a, a tool device for that. But you can as well map the tool device on the touch strip, so um, that shouldn't be a problem. So you can do like uh, volume writings or something like that. Okay, the, these are these buttons that you can configure. And here you have note repeat. And the note repeat is, let's take that. You have to press here on the right side, the note repeat button. And then it repeats the button. Uh, it repeats the note. And the button slaps you back. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so if you press here period, you can control um, the period of the, or the um, repetition of the note. Then we go down. It gets faster. Go up again, it gets slower. With the length, it's the note length. So I have long notes. If I go down, the notes get shorter. Okay, the um, configuration of the note repeat is pressing, uh, holding down shift here and pressing the repeat button. Then you uh, get uh, the configuration of the note repeat where you can change everything like you did in the fader section here. You can do that here as well. Or maybe, I don't know, no, just here, for example. Um, maybe if I use it here, put it here, uh, I can configure it here as well. So a very nice and very quick way to configure everything you need. So that's everything um, for the touch strip on the push two with the driven by a MOS script. Thanks again, MOS, for your really, really great script. And if you have some nice tips and hints for me or for other people just comment in the comment section that helps me very much because always feed the algorithm to help me to support my channel and um, yeah i would like to see you again in the next video and uh, stay healthy see you soon bye bye